I would take this with a grain of salt, but I gotta look out for my cholesterol. What's up, guys? How okay, enough about you times are talking about me. So I'll be using TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it's my only way for me to keep in touch with society because my back be going out more than I do. But I'm a fashion person, which is basically Google Translate for yes. I destroy landscapes with my outfits. Haha, <laughs> I love telling dad jokes, but he never laughs because he left me when I was 14. Ah! Anyways, because of that, I like to stay in touch with the entire community. So I'm just going along for the ride. I just didn't know that the ride would be on the back of a bowl. Pause. Shopping sprees. Flat stomachs. These are all major components to what we've done with Kesha's previous legacy. And I've been noticing that after all of these years, one of the clothing companies that's never gone away is Brandy Melville. And I'm tired of them getting bigger. Just kidding. A store employee will have me in a meat grinder before they carry a size medium. Today, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a deep dive into not only the fucking weird business practices of this retailer, but also the extremely strange community surrounding it. Because if there's anything I've learned about girls who wait in line to buy ruffled tank tops that have strangely what? ambiguous sayings on them, they all have boyfriends who are one shot away from singing the n-word but if y'all are ready for that then it's time for you to sit down relax and listen to the syntax let's get into it but before we get into that i would just like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor which is atlas vpn so atlas vpn is a vpn see mom i don't need university and how it works is that this tool encrypts your data and then hides your virtual address by providing you with a new ip All the traffic and is meddled with and then rerouting your internet things. footprint it's really important Blah blah blah. Think about blah, 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 blah. Google translation for those of y'all who did not understand the assignment in school. That basically means that identity secret. We oui. good. Yeah, I speak French now. Anyways, not only does Atlas VPN increase your level of security online through features like their data breach monitor, but they are also capable of doing so much more like helping you access different countries, Netflix libraries. Finland has nothing for me because these popular streaming services all got geographical restrictions due to licensing. So luckily for me though, all I gotta do is open the Atlas VPN app, click the country I wanna connect to, and boom! Once you log on to the platform of your choice, you'll have an entirely new section of series to choose from and watch within two days. But the app is supported on any device and also has a 30 day money back guarantee for all subscription services. So be sure to click my link in the description below to get early access to their Black Friday deal with 86% off as well as three extra months for free. Thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring today's video. And now let the anger for leopard print crop tops begin. So whenever people bring up Brandy Melville, what they usually talk about is their one size fits all policy, which for the record, since I know you bitches like vinyl players, that's a straight up fucking lie because the only way those jeans is going up as if it's up a size. But honestly, the idea of one size fits most clothing, well, we all know this pretty much just made for slim or skinnier people. And my opinion might sound like a shock to some of y'all, but having a brand that caters to very petite and small girls is not inherently a bad idea since these types of girls exist. The actual problem is the execution and the ideology. First of all, let's go back to this one size fits most concept. Spark notes rundown. Everybody has a different body. And when a company makes one size fits all clothing, they're basically just fisting their ideal body type into buyers who are just interested in wearing their shit. Because the reality is that these clothes are a size extra small to small. You just don't want to put a label on it. But that then leads us to understand that the core value that this brand is built on is the belief that only pretty and skinny bitches are allowed to dress cute. Yeah, that's sign language for what the fuck? And don't get it twisted. I myself am skinny and also pretty. Pretty fucking irritating. Let me just clarify that it's perfectly fine to be thin unless you're going to extreme lengths to maintain it, but it's not okay to believe that being thin is what makes you better than everyone else. And that's what the creator of Brandy Melville stands by. So Stefan Marsan is the owner and CEO of this brand, and he's a huge asshole. But instead of saving that for the casting couch, he's decided to run a corporation that takes exclusion, fast shaming, and racism to an entirely different level. First of all, he doesn't just like thinner girls. 
He hates fat people. When Brandy Melville first hit the international market, so opened its first stores up in America, he micromanaged everything constantly. And after a few weeks, eventually told all of the employees to take everything but the three smallest sizes off the floor. From that moment on, they did not carry anything above a size four which is a small. And this was because Stefan believed that fat people would damage his nice and delicate clothing and that he'd rather only sell to good looking rich little girls. Stefan's brother Yvonne also did the same thing, micromanaging all the stores around the world and even told the main Canadian franchise owner, so basically the dude that got the rights to all of the Brandy Melville stores within Canada, that he was wrong for hiring a manager that was clearly too fat and short to work there. And one girl who worked at the New York location up until 2018 said that one visit from the higher ups could lead to a store wide diet. Everyone was scared that they would lose their job from gaining too much weight and went on to have eating disorders. And not only that, but employees at a lot of the Brandy Melville storefronts have to go through a lot of bullshit just to keep their jobs. One example of this is the fact that they are required to send full body selfies to the company's executives. And if Stefan thinks that they're too overweight or unattractive, they are to be fired on the spot. <laughs> Is it not fucking weird that an underage girl's build has to be approved by a man in his late 30s in order to sell tank tops? The former vice president has confirmed all of this, so don't be thinking that this shit is just hearsay. But he's also given us this lovely text conversation right here where Stefan calls the manager of the Newport Beach location a piece of shit that's clearly going to ruin the store. So he hates fat people. Well, really he just hates people who are not one sneeze away from having a heart attack. Fair enough. Except that's not even true because if you're a person of color, then that's not fair enough for him and his brand. The previous senior vice president, damn, I hope this man is on witness protection, said that if Stefan decides that there's too many black employees at a Brandy Melville store, then they are to be replaced with white women because he does not want those kinds of people in the store. He's called black women primitive and also doesn't even want them to own his clothing because of the same, my clothes are too nice and delicate idea. Well, Stefan, I hope that your nose cartilage is nice and delicate because my fist is gonna make sure that Ancestry.com thinks both Voldemort is in your family fucking tree. Please watch my ad so I can afford therapy. And it doesn't even end there because Yvonne, the same scumbag brother that I just mentioned earlier, also told the previously mentioned Canadian franchise owner that he did not like what he saw at the Square One Mall in Ontario. His quote is, there's only Indians here. There's only dark people here. The customers are ghetto and the store needs to be shut down immediately. Yeah, it continues. They pay people of color and Asians less than white girls, even if they're way more Old group qualified. chats where they send each other Hitler propaganda as well as jokes that contain they say a whole N lot of racism. All because Stefan believes that the ideal woman is blonde, skinny, and white. Nazi? I did not see that coming. Lastly, the company thrives on literal sexism and misogyny. None of these people even fucking like women, at least not enough to see them as human beings. So not only are they dictating what women should look and act like, you know, don't be black, don't be anything above a size four. But Stefan also claims that women are the cause of all of the world's problems, despite being all the problems with the world himself. <laughs> For instance, the group chat that I just mentioned just now, the members of it, which are Brandy Melville higher ups, they all exchange pornographic pictures of women, of young girls, and also plan out illegal activities with said girls. Executives sometimes take their retail employees out for drinks, despite some of them being underage, and also hit on them by physically touching them, like tickling and whispering sexual comments into their ears, despite them saying no. And just when we all thought that it would end, there's actually a two-story Brandy apartment that's in Soho, you know, one of the fucking richest neighborhoods in New York. But the girls who get to stay there are the executive's favorites called Special Snowflakes. And not only that, but this title also includes exclusive work trips to Hawaii and Italy, thousand dollar shopping sprees on the company credit card, etc., etc. But all of these perks are being used to take advantage of these girls because not only do their bosses encourage them to party all night and abuse drugs in the brandy apartment so that they can take advantage of them but girls have been raped 
while staying there because executives have their own suites next to them. One former employee didn't even want to file a police report when she got to the hospital because she knew that they would take away her work visa and then she'd no longer be able to stay in the country. This is disgusting. And all of this filth just drains itself into a terrible and toxic fan base full of vulnerable young women and girls. So Brandy Melville is basically a fucking cult in my eyes and nobody can change my mind because the mentality around this fast fashion retailer is just... <laughs> Y'all got the bitch who never shuts the fuck up speechless. First of all, there's this weird Depop craze around it where originally 12 to $15 shirts will be marked up to these insane prices. Like girls will fight over these pieces, emotionally abuse sellers for not letting them buy it. And like I've been saying, this brand is purposefully not made for everyone, right? Well, this whole rare brandy reselling craze is just what happens when a brand's morals are all based around being a part of the it crowd. What I mean by that is retail brandy is already somewhat expensive for a lot of young girls that just want to be exactly like their idols slash peers that they look up to. Reselling these dresses with a markup that averages at about 317% over the original price makes it even harder for teens or people who just come from lower income families to wear a stylish fucking cardigan. It just reinforces the exclusive feeling that this brand is already trying to sell. Because not only do you have to be white and skinny in order to wear this shit, but now you also have to be rich. Also, their one size fits most ideology that they thrive on. It's become an inspiration for eating disorder and thin spell communities. And I'm not just pulling birds out of my ass being like, ha ha, a funny trick. This is actually real because it's been around ever since the creation of this brand and it will continue to be around so long as this company continues on with its brandy girl marketing. A brandy girl is essentially an all American teenager who has a retro filter slapped onto her life. So, basically people who go to Urban Outfitters to buy a gua sha. But the brand basically sells their clothes by posting about this trope and convincing young girls that they're special for owning these pieces, that they're super cool, but it's not harmless. The subliminal messaging is that they have to be skinny in order to live this lifestyle. So when I was 14, I was a freshman in high school. And that's when I started to develop anorexia. And I remember Tumblr was my main source of feeling this hatred that I had for my body, but Brandy Melville's website and posts were some of the things that I constantly revisited because I just wanted to be skinny enough to fit into their fucking clothes. I couldn't get their jeans on and it became a goal of mine to lose weight so that I could finally wear this shit so that I could finally be fucking cool and pretty. But I was already a size small. So isn't it crazy how that still wasn't good enough? I never saw people who looked like me on their page. It was always Acacia Brindley and Joanna Kutcha and it's not their fault, but I fucking hated myself for not looking like them, for not being white, for not being skinny enough. I'm 21 now and I finally beat anorexia nervosa at 19 years old, but this shit still exists and it's not Tumblr anymore. Now it's Twitter. And these girls are posting objectively skinny models and saying the exact same things that I was reblogging when I was that age. And some of them don't even have that because they call these once again, objectively skinny models fat for having fucking organs. Somebody tweeted in response to a product photo on the Brandy Melville website. Maybe they're doing a line of maternity clothes. What the fuck is wrong with this company? And don't go into my fucking comments blaming these young girls. Do not shame them and say that they're the problem because these girls are taught from birth that they're not good enough, that the beauty people pay to have is attainable through things like control. It's not their fault that their brain is underdeveloped and these are the messages that they just so happen to come across because when you're 16 years old, you're not well-versed enough in life to think, oh, I don't look like that because of my genetics. Instead, you think, Oh, I don't look like that because something's wrong with me because I'm not good enough. The media and this side of the fashion industry just does not show us what real bodies fucking look like. So do not call them disgusting. They are ill. And the only way that any of this stops is if we just have some compassion and show them the love that they cannot give themselves. For some reason, a lot of people think that the answer just lies in, oh, maybe you should have just had good taste. Like if you didn't like ugly clothes, we wouldn't be here, but there's nothing wrong with liking that style of clothing.
You fucking weirdos! I just want to say that obviously I and many of you watching this think that the company should change and who the fuck am I kidding? Liquidation! But for those of y'all who still like the look, I decided to do some research and find some places for you to get Brandy Melville for less or things that look similar to it. But for those of y'all who cannot stand to not have the proper tags <laughs> on your shirts, I suggest getting resale from Facebook Marketplace, Best Share Collective, which honestly, the latter fucking shocks me that it's coming out of my mouth, but also Poshmark and Sell. Selfie is the one that I recommend the most out of all of these options because they had the lowest prices by far. If you really can't afford this shit, then I suggest AliExpress because they have a lot of incredible fucking dupes. If you just use the reverse image search tool in the upper corner, I'm not gonna clock you bitches, okay? Because I'm not the one who's putting batteries in my wristwatch. I used to buy fake IMG Lucid pants back in the day, so... I'm not looking. But for those of y'all who can afford it, these are some sustainable and ethically produced brands that I am passing on to you. We have RUMI, Faithful the Brand. And also, most importantly, I feel like everybody should just invest in their own personal style outside of these fucking trends. Guys, well, let's be honest, the demographic is mostly women. I used to want to be a sorority girl type, and I didn't even realize that I was suppressing so much of who I was because of that. But now I buy all of my clothes either secondhand from archival sellers or through sites like Satire, Ukes, and The Outnet. The Outnet, oh my fucking God, you can get designer for like 70, 80% off. And the final note that I'll send you off with is I just advise everybody to really research the brands that they're buying and looking into. Because if there's anything y'all have learned from the past 15 to 20 minutes getting a floral skirt means that you're subconsciously supporting all of this bullshit and i'm gonna be honest with y'all y'all gotta start giving a fuck about black people but yes that about sums it up i'm not that fucking stupid i can do math and that will bring us to the end of today's video thank you guys so much for watching be sure to like subscribe turn your post notifications on so you can be notified anytime i drop this heat this was definitely a lengthy video for me to film because oh my god i could not keep my level of calm at the normal baseline bitch i was getting mad as fuck but i really just want to say thank you guys so much for watching all the way until the end my camera is dying so i'm not gonna do the freestyle as fucking usual jesus christ i talk way too much but yes, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay educated. Stay healthy. I don't know. Some of y'all need to get up and leave the house. <laughs> and until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.